Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. I pointed out to you that the day of evil comes. It's not if, but when it comes. And I've entitled the first message on the first week, Evil Days Ahead. The second week, I followed that up with a message entitled Winds of War, in light of the spiritual warfare, winds being spirit, and the spiritual warfare that we find ourselves in during evil days ahead. Last week, I had a message entitled, Invulnerable, discussing with you the breastplate of righteousness, which is necessary to cover up the vulnerable places of our spiritual life. Today, as we continue in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And then it goes on to explain what this is important for. The whole goal of all of this is so that we will be able to stand firm. Now, further, it says in verse 15, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. This is the fourth message this week, feet fitted with the readiness. I've put this picture here in order for you to get this message entitled Fit and Ready. When it comes to shoes or things that we put in our feet, there are casual shoes, there are dress shoes, there are even athletic shoes and a number of different types of casual, athletic, or dress shoes, or even weird and funny shoes. But the point of this message is to be fit and ready. I've chosen this particular shoe because it has spikes on it in memory of Roman soldiers' sandals or shoes which have spikes on them. The purpose of these spikes or the purpose of these shoes is because whether you have a breastplate or whether you have a belt, if you do not have the right shoes, you cannot stand. The spikes of these shoes are there so that you can stand firm. You need to have shoes that have spikes in order to stand firm, particularly in rough terrain. The first point I want to make is the ability to stand firm. The devil wants you down. The devil wants you down spiritually, relationally, even in your health and physical body, and even in your finances. God, however, wants you and me to be able to stand firm. The ability to stand firm means the ability to be secure. This picture of an archaeologist showing a single spike of the Roman shoe tells you why these spikes are important and why these shoes are important, to secure the ability to stand firm. In, order, in other words, without these spikes, without these shoes, we will not be able to stand firm or to give one the ability to have a secure grip. Without these spikes, the, 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 we would be slipping and sliding and stumbling. And that's why the, the, Paul uses this, this mnemonic, this picture, in order for us to see the importance of the ability to stand firm, the ability to be secure, the ability to be stable. Roman soldiers were secure in their position because of the shoes they wore. That made them be able to position themselves stably and would be sure-footed when they moved along. The ability to stand firm begins with the ability to be secure, the ability to be stable, and finally, the ability to be stationary, nor stand your place or to be steady. When I think about something that's steady and strong and big and something that's stationary, I think about the earth. The earth is huge, and yet in the midst of that, it is actually orbiting the sun at the speed of roughly a thousand miles per second, but it's sure-footed. It's secure in its place. It's stable. It's stationary. It's not bouncing from place to place. And more importantly, it's very steady. The point that Paul was making is that the ability to stand firm is in your shoes. The ability to be secure, the ability to be stable, and the ability to be stationary in the stations of your life, whether they be spiritual, relational, physical, or even financial. Now, going back to Ephesians 6.15, it says, With your feet fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. This brings me to my second point. The ability to stand firm is, lies on this gospel of peace. It comes from it. That's exactly what Paul said. Now, the gospel is an important thing. The gospel simply means good news. The first time that we hear this word gospel or it's ever declared is through an angel. An angel from heaven declared, do not be afraid. I bring the gospel. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all people. What's interesting is the next words that the angel and the other heavenly host followed after they declared the good news. It says, A great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, there it is, 
peace to those whom, on whom His favor rests. Our ability to stand, our security, our steadiness comes from the good news of peace. The good news of peace starts with peace is all about good news. When you study the Greek language, there are three different terms or words or phrases that are used for the knowledge of good news in Greek. The first one would be, I have good news to tell you. For example, you would say, my daughter just got married. I've got good news to tell you. Or for people, or if you were working for a company and you were telling somebody the good news, hey, people are being retrenched and fired and you're not one of them. That's good news to tell someone. A second phrase that they use in the Greek is that I have really good news to tell you. For example, my daughter who just got married just had twins. I have really good news to tell you and they're all very healthy. Or people are getting fired and retrenched, but you did not get fired. In fact, you got promoted. I have really good news to tell you. The gospel is not any of these phrases. When the word gospel is used or the Greek word for gospel is used, what it's saying is I have really, really good news to tell you that's too good to be true. And that's what it means. Not only do I have my daughter is married or, and, has a, and has a baby, his baby is the son of God. <laughs> or people are getting fired and retrenched and you didn't get promoted. The father, the owner of the business actually wants you to be his heir apparent person who will take over the entire business. The world has also good news. It has news that offer us and says there's now me uh, medication that allows you to sleep in peace and to be able, and the good news is that it's not going to harm you. There are things that say you can now handle depression by using this or entertainment, or maybe your investments are going to happen. The problem with all of these is from the world's peace is they're from the outside in versus when the God's way of peace is from the inside out. When you have things like this that are from the outside in, they're usually unstable. They're usually unsecure, and usually they're not sustainable. And that's why you need peace that comes from the gospel of peace. Peace is all about the good news of God. Isaiah chapter 9 tells us that peace is a person, which is my second point to this point. Gospel of peace is really a person. Isaiah 9 tells us that he's the Prince of Peace. In the Jewish language, the word peace means shalom, which literally means nothing missing, nothing broken, everything is whole. And it makes sense. If nothing is missing, if nothing is broken, and everything is whole, of course you will have peace. Jesus took peace to another level. He says in John 14, verse 27, Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Notice the difference. My peace is not the same as the world's. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Notice it says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Basically what he's saying is my peace is different from the world's peace. It is very different. It is the peace that surpasses human understanding. And that's why when you go to the world, when our idea of peace is limited by the world's ways, we never understand God's peace because it simply is something that surpasses human understanding. Jesus took peace to a whole different level. When he spoke to his disciples and said, my peace I give you, he was saying something when the next step of his journey was he was going to go to the cross. In short, whether there's lack, whether there's conflict, whether there's pressure, or whether there's loss, calm, tranquility of soul is what peace is all about. Now, to be, give you full disclosure, I'm not anywhere near this. But I'm getting there. Because even Jesus himself struggled with the thought of going to the cross. But the point Jesus was making was, you can have peace even when things are broken, even when things are missing, and even when things are not whole. This is the peace of God. It is not just peace that comes from the gospel of peace, as in something that, peace that it's all good news. It's peace is a person. Finally, peace that can rule and guide you. The gospel of peace is not just about something spiritual. It's something that can guide you and rule you on a daily basis. Many of us think that we can only have peace when things are all tranquil and good and life is bliss and it's a balancing act of everything that's good. And the truth is the furthest. That's not true. Fact of the matter is, it's more like this. There are good times and life has its own battles and challenges and when those things happen, our peace is challenged. 
only because we're living in our bodies and we're living in a fallen world. Jesus in John 16 verse 33 says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. He's already telling you, in this world, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have issues. You're going to stumble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. How can peace actually rule and guide me on a daily basis? Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 tells us exactly how. It says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. Notice the words, let the peace of Jesus rule in your hearts. Peace is the thing that needs to rule in our hearts. That word rule is actually the word to govern, to arbitrate, or to judge. When we are walking in our lives, we need to discern and to judge because life is full of many decisions. And many times when we find destabilizing occurrences in our lives, problematic, insecure, unsecure places in our lives, we need to face the right decisions. The wrong decisions can lead to further loss of peace. Life is full of decisions. So then the question is, how does one decide? Well, the starting point is, what is the truth of God and what does God have to say about this? By the way, this is literally how I make decisions for many of my life's issues spiritually, relationally, physically, and even financially. The second thing I would ask is, the best bre- the, the belt of truth, the second thing is, is this righteous? Is this the right thing to do? But the third thing I use is, do I have peace? You've probably often done this or even heard about this where you say, I know it's true, I know it's righteous, but I have no peace. This is the ultimate umpire, the ultimate judge, the ultimate arbitration of whether you're going to make a decision. Peace. When you know peace in your spirit, when you know the truth of who Jesus is and what he's done for you, then you're going to be able to make the right decision. The stability of our lives, the security of being able to stand firm comes only from the gospel of peace. Peace is all about good news. It's about a person whose name is Jesus and peace can rule and guide us every single day of our lives. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, it says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the words, may God himself. In other words, the only real source of peace is God himself. The more we try to find peace in different places, we probably will not find it. Or if we do, it is unstable, unsecure, and something that is not sustainable. The God of peace is the God who sanctifies us through and through. The God of peace sanctifies us through and through. And that's the third point I want to bring up. Let the God of peace sanctify you. Only through a process of sanctification can you finally find peace in every single area of your life. The devil wants you to be put down. He knows that when you slip and you fall and you're down and you're not able to stand firm in every area of your life, he can clobber you to death regardless of whether you have a belt or you have a breastplate. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit be sanctified through and through. When you let the peace of God sanctify you or the God of peace sanctify you, it starts with your spirit. Our spirit is where the beginning point of all truth resides. You cannot have truth outside of your spirit. God's truth resides in your spirit, not just in your mind, not just in your will, not just in your emotions. It resides in the very spirit that God has in you. God's righteousness plus God's truth equals God's peace. The more truth you have in your spirit and the more righteousness you live through your spirit, the more of God's peace you're going to have. The key, therefore, is to allow God to sanctify you. It is the process by which he causes your life to be changed. And the more you have that secret place of your spirit, sanctified by God, then he can sanctify your soul with peace. Let the God of peace sanctify you with the peace in your spirit, with peace in your soul. Our soul is not our spirit. Our soul is actually our mind, which is our will, 
and our emotions. These are the parts of our, of our soul. Our minds need to be renewed. And the only way that can be renewed is to be changed from glory to glory in God. The problem with our minds is being taught, manipulated by books, by parents, by teachers, by the world, by different experiences. Our wills have been, have been experiencing different things and have been hardwired with different emotions. The will, when we're hardwired, our very strongest emotion that our controls our mind and our will is fear. And when you have fear, there is no peace. Overcoming this emotion demands that our souls be sanctified. And our souls can only be sanctified if it is fed by our spirits. For many, it is our bodies feeding our souls and our souls are not even connected to our spirits. In order for us to have peace in our souls, our souls need to be fed by our spirit. When my soul tells me, you're a sinner, my spirit declares, I am born again in Jesus Christ. I'm a new creation, I've been made righteous, and I'm being sanctified through and through. When my soul tells me that you're selfish, you're impatient, you're not kind, you're not loving, and your your, your people don't like you, or your wife doesn't even like you sometimes, My spirit says, I'm being transformed. My mind is being renewed. I'm growing from glory to glory, and the fruit of the spirit is growing in me. This is what happens when our spirit feeds our mind, our wills, and our emotions. When my soul says, you're unhealthy, my spirit says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. No weapon formed against me will prosper. My ultimate destiny is a resurrected body. The more our spirit feeds our minds, our wills, and our emotions, the stronger and the more peaceful our whole personality, our whole being becomes. When my soul says, you're going to be poor the rest of your life, my God will supply all my needs through his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. My God will bless me above and beyond anything I can think of or imagine. The Lord will grant me abundant prosperity in the fruit of the womb, the young of my livestock, in the crops of my ground, in everything that he desires to bless me. He gives me the ability to produce wealth and gives me seed to the sower and blesses me all day long. The God of peace sanctifies us through peace, with peace in our spirits, with peace in our souls, and finally, with peace in our bodies. Our bodies are simply the extension of what we are in our spirits and in our souls. It's just the way we are. It's just an extension. It actually just expresses the things that are going on inside of us. What we see in the physical is just an expression of what is in the inside of us. The way we think, the way we love, the way we are motivated, and the way we feel. When we don't understand that, what happens is we try to find peace through our bodies. We stuff it with things that don't work. And when they don't work, it brings trouble to us. And when you do this in reverse, you will never find peace. In order to stand your ground in the day of spiritual warfare, you need to understand you need the shoes that are fitted in order for you to have the gospel of peace. Peace starts from your spirit. God's truth resides not just in your head, it begins in your spirit. God's righteousness plus God's truth equals God's peace. Through a process of sanctification, of growing day by day in understanding who you are in God, you will have the ability to stand firm. To stand firm means the ability to be secure, the ability to be stable, and the ability to be able to be stationary and steady in the course of your life. It comes only from the gospel of peace. Peace is good news, the good news that it is really too good to be true, but is actually true. Peace is a person. His name is Jesus, and he's shown you a very different level of peace that surpasses all human understanding. Peace can rule and guide you every day of your life, not in a perfect way, but in a way that governs you, that guides you, that judges what is right and what is wrong. And finally, that the peace of God, the God of peace rather, sanctify you through and through with with peace in your spirit, with peace in your soul, and with peace in your body. As I close, Join me in a short proclamation of Jesus and join me in this take a piece of bread and a cup as you join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we proclaim and declare that we're able to stand firm, secure, stable, and steady and can only come because of the gospel of peace that you brought to us. 
May Lord, may you continue to sanctify us through and through in our spirit, in our souls, in our bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen.